Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Camilo Scherer and together with my wife Cynthia, we would like to welcome you all to this classical music of India event and Guru Purnima celebration. Guru Purnima is an Indian festival for acknowledging and honoring all our teachers. Usually held on the first full moon of the summer, tonight's Guru Purnima is extra special because it's also a lunar eclipse. So, we didn't want to miss this fitting occasion to honor our music teachers, Maestros Steve Oda and Tai Burho, and acknowledge their teachers, Ustad Ali Akbar Khan and Ustad Zakir Hussain, with a big surprise that we will unveil tonight. Much love to you, and certainly to Camilo and Cynthia for hosting us this evening, as they have for the last uh, 10 or 11 years in, in Tucson. Um, and of course, it can't go without saying our gurus, Ustad Ali Akbar Khan Saab and Ustad Zakir Hussain, for whose uh, wisdom and teaching have carried us to this point. Of course, it's a lifelong endeavor for, for, for us to learn this incredible classical music. But without further ado, uh, you're probably waiting to hear some, some uh, music from here, and we hope that it uh, pleases you. Um, I want to start with the very large grand raga Iman Kalyan. Um, it's a, a raga with much devotion, peace, and compassion. I hope uh, you enjoy it. I'll play an alap and jor in the first section and then be joined by Tai on tabla, where we'll hear a rhythmic composition in tintal, slow tintal of 16 beats. Okay, thank you, enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Awesome, awesome. <laughs> the time has come for the big surprise. <laughs> and for that, I, I want to introduce uh, a dear friend and a fellow Tabla student. And his name is Greg Leonard. Greg is a geologist and a planetary scientist. He has lived and worked across the planet exploring for minerals and studying glaciers and mountain hazards. These days, and of course nights, he is an astronomer with a NASA-funded project called the Catalina Sky Survey, based out of the, the Department of Planetary Science at the University of Arizona. It's this uh, Greg's connection with the cosmos that brings him here uh, tonight for a special announcement. Hello, thank you, Camilo, for that wonderful introduction. Um, and good evening, uh, Steve G and Tai G, and everyone out there tonight in this virtual universe. Hi, everybody. I'm coming to you uh, uh, like Camilo from Tucson, Arizona. And yeah, there are two connections that kind of have me here with you tonight. One is the connection to the cosmos. Um, but the other one, I think the, the one that's salient for tonight is that I'm really lucky to be one of Thai's Tabla students and also a student of Hindustani uh, raga music with Steve. Um, their music, their teaching, their generosity, their patience, important, has been a real blessing for me. So tonight, on this eve of Guru Purnima, this is an especially appropriate time to honor Steve and Ty uh, as the wonderful teachers that they are. Oh. So without further fanfare, um, Steve and Ty, if you have not already peeked at those boxes sitting on your floor for the past week, <laughs> I'd like for you to uh, open those up for us right now. Unboxing. Unboxing. Yeah, we were, we were very carefully advised do not open and my box actually says don't open until the fifth just in case i was a little <laughs> <laughs> yeah mine too you can set that loose piece of paper on the top aside for now i will be speaking to that in a few moments okay and just pay attention to what is framed in for the time being wow <laughs> oh oh my god <laughs> Oh my God! Oh my God! Um, no way! Yes, way! <laughs> Everyone's out there going, "What way?" So, Steve and Ty, uh, maybe individually, you can hold up your frame certificates to the webcam, and in a few moments, we will also post a static image of those certificates so everybody can see it much more clearly. But right now, uh, I just want everybody to see what these are. I will narrate. These are honorary certificates announcing that Maestro Sirode player and composer Steve Oda and Ty Burho have been formally recognized with minor planets named in their honor. So the official announcement actually occurred about a month ago in a publication of the Minor Planet Center, uh, which is a um, uh, published through the Harvard Center for Astrophysics. Oh. And all this is under the auspices of the International Astronomical Union. Wow. And maybe I'll just briefly explain sort of how we got here. As was mentioned, this is a long, uh, rather systematic process, which begins with the discovery of these two minor planets about 13 and 21 years ago, respectively. And then these asteroids were tracked, their positions and their orbits were refined. They were given provisional designations and eventually they're numbered. And once these asteroids get numbered, then the discovering person or the institution that discovered them carries the privilege of proposing a name and a citation to accompany the asteroid. 
So as it turns out, through Catalina Sky Survey, I am sort of the head of the ad hoc committee for proposing minor planet names. I'm kind of the gatekeeper, you know, as it were, for a minor planet naming. Um, uh, Camilo, could you again share first Steve's certificate? So um, this is what the, the guys have just opened up. And, you know, in addition to the new name for this uh, minor planet, you can see uh, previous and the provisional technical reference numbers. But I will say in, in Raga jargon or Raga speak, uh, I believe the Pakar or the heart of the certificate resides within the official citation for the asteroids. Mm -hmm. These citations were created by myself and Camilo Scherer, and we, we feel they reflect the sentiments of Steve's and Ty's many fans, admirers, and students across the planet. I'd also like to mention that they're, they're, they're short citations because the, the space is strictly limited, so we had to distill down the sentiments to essential ingredients only. I'd like to read Steve's, if I could, uh, aloud, and then Ty's. Steve Oda is a Japanese-Canadian Sarod player, composer, and teacher of classical Hindustani music. His virtuosity on the Sarod and his kind spirit have enchanted people across the world, and his generosity in teaching has inspired many students to carry on the rich legacy of classical Indian music. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you, Greg. Place in the heavens. Thank you. Ty Burho is a topple player, composer, producer, and teacher whose wide ranging musical collaborations have opened new stylistic frontiers for the tabla. His generosity, sharing his explorations of the instrument, has inspired many people to learn the tabla as a path for self discovery and collaborative creation. Thank you so much. And um, occasionally, is it okay if I orbit around Steve? Yeah, well, that's a good segue, Ty, because uh, there's a little bit more to describe about this. These are not just any usual minor planets. I had some luxury in selecting some special space rocks for you, our maestros, uh, ones who I feel their orbital characteristics in particular in some way reflects your musical nature and personalities. So the first thing I want to mention is that both of your minor planets are not near Earth asteroids. They're not going to collide with Earth, at least not any time in the next several or many, many, many million years. But, but mind you, they are Mars crossing asteroids. And I'm going to get, that, get to that in just a moment. Both of your uh, worlds are roughly one mile wide rocky bodies. That's 1.6 kilometers wide in metric speak. Each one takes four years to complete a single orbit around the sun, traveling between Mars and Jupiter. Now the four year cycle is, as you know, reflective of you know, several commonly played rhythm cycles or tals of Hindustani music. So I like to think that sort of mantras are being played out as you guys cycle around, mm. you know, in your orbits. <laughs> the planet crossing aspect is in recognition of, uh, the, for the both of you, your curious and adventurous natures, especially, I believe, your willingness to take musical risks in the search for, you know, novel and harmonious rewards. So that is why these particular worlds were selected especially for you. So here we are starting way, way out, probably about the position of Pluto, 40 billion, billion miles out. And I'm gonna pan in slowly toward our sun. So here's the icy giants, Neptune and Uranus. And then we come to the crown jewel of the solar system, ringed Saturn. And finally, we get to Jupiter, old man Jupiter. Oh, what do we have here? What? <laughs> Orbiting between Mars and Jupiter, we've got a new world, Steve Oda. 
Wow. <laughs> this is a, an animation that's kind of brought to you uh, via a tool through the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Caltech. <clears throat> and, you know, it's a nice little tool to, to show exactly where you reside at any moment in time relative to the, the major planets. Wow. And uh, hey. there you are, Steve. All I did was type in your number of your asteroid, and you popped up right here with this diagram. Wow. Wow. So you are um, amazing. You are officially in the astronomical database right now. Here's our friend Ty, and uh, you wow. might be a, a little more inclined than Steve here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we can make that interpretation a little bit later, I think. But you're yeah, both right. really in similar orbits, and I wanted to put you together, but as separate bodies. And um, mm. Ty, I'll show you how to, you know, get onto this later too, so you can. Have fun with that. I've got only one more uh, piece of this to commemorate this. I, I, I felt compelled to write a poem uh, in honor uh, of this. And Camilo, perhaps you can share uh, that screen. I will read this poem to close out you know, this part of, of tonight's program. This is uh, Ode to 304908 and 306479. Mile wide planets adrift the swirling heavens like flotsam lithic fossils of some great beginning. Worlds unto themselves and primal blocks still comprising an allop of forms magnificent. Other worlds, larger orbs, our home. They are ancient, traveled, Vital. Stately are they, the lasting aspect of procession, solid, singular their virtuous nature. Yet with mean resonance, dance and spin they do in a chakradar grand among the silent mass of Jove, Saturn, and Iris. Mm -hmm. Cadence at four for one, their conic paths alighting, waxed and waned bits of tintal, ektal, kiherwa. Though wonder is true, bold, Curious, eccentric, cross they do into frontiers foreign. These adventurers, benevolent agitators of space and time. Seekers are they, the honeyed rewards of collective risk. A glow, paired they spin to sum, perpetual, beating out the tall and rog of ages. Joy, oh, they bring to yearning hearts of a longing cosmos. I really wish we could be together live with you this evening and delighting in, in your music live. But it is, you know, with loving consolation tonight, we all stand under two new shining points of light in the cosmos. Now, bearing the names of you, our beloved maestros and friends, Steve, Oda, and Ty Burho, congratulations to you both for now having so deservedly taken flight into the cosmos. Oh. When I was growing up, my father, who was a musician and, um, and was a great lover of classical music, uh, classical music was what he had on a lot of the time. And Holtz, the composer Holtz, composed a, uh, a series of compositions called yeah. The Planets. And um, so I just, I have all of those in my, my head. At any moment, they kind of, surface and go back down and i just have always through his um fascination with the you know the the heavens and uh with space and science fiction and all the stuff that goes with that um i was raised really along with my brothers with a love of uh astronomy and outer space and so w w the planets made a lot of sense to me when i was growing up it's really a musical um, event to me. The gesture is a musical gift, the same way we, we, we offer our music to you. To me, my interpretation is it's a very deeply important musical gift from you, mm. Greg. So uh, thank you so much. That's a little, a little bit about how I feel. Steve, can you share a little bit about how your teacher taught? Was he like into repetition? Did he share something with you and kind of leave you to 
master it? What what was his teaching like? It's a good question. Um, I I took instruction from Kansab in two different two different ways, quite quite distinctly different. One was in a classroom setting with many other students, all frantically trying to copy whatever it was he was trying to teach. And him uh, sitting back on the, on the dais and listening to us all flail around. <laughs> um, and and, and some, somehow being satisfied with what we were attempting to do uh, sometime. Um, then there was the other aspect of actually going to his home um, sometimes with one or two other students, sometimes alone. And that was a quite a different um, uh, situation where basically he would play something and watch me or us attempt to learn a small phrase and then say, no, not good enough, do it again, <laughs> or do it this way. So they're quite, quite different regimens in, in, in learning. Mm. Mm, thanks for sharing that story. There is a question here uh, from Joe. For both Steve and Ty, I was wondering if you could describe when you both first met each other and the very beginning of your musical collaborative path together. Uh, but maybe 2005 yeah. in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Right, and there was a yoga studio and I was invited to by the studio to present. It was like a, a yoga retreat type of a thing. And uh, um, they said, oh, why don't you, why don't we create a little music as a part of the the event in the evening and then all the yogis can come in and you know enjoy so um a, a dear friend of both of ours a long-term friend of, of steve oda is um michael lewis and i was just in brief um when i first started studying with my teacher uh ustad zakir hussein um, it was Michael who took me in and said, stop sleeping in your car, dude. You can, you can, you know, have a bed in our house. And so, um, or a couch or whatever it was, but he was the one who really took me in and allowed me to have a comfortable experience of going to Zakir's master classes, as well as helping me sort through a lot of the tabla tradition, uh, help it make sense. And uh, he's the one who kept on saying, you know, you have a, a kind of a gentle, a kind quality to your personality. You know, Steve Oda is like that. You guys really should play. He's such a great musician. And um, so I kept on hearing about Steve from <laughs> Michael. And, and then one day I was, I was in a position to invite somebody. And I said, okay, Steve Oda. So uh, I invited him out and he flew out from California to Pennsylvania. We basically, I, we may have met in person before that, but never played. Mm -hmm. And uh, we basically had our first hangout on stage. And, um, and it was just so, you know, and he's, he's such a maestro. And I was, I was really kind of in the beginning phases of playing classical music, that is. I had done a lot of kirtan up till then and, and kind of fusion music, but uh, not so much classical. And so, uh, Steve really was willing to let me kind of learn the ropes with him as an accompanist. And as I got opportunities to um, invite him in other situations or even out on tour, I think we went to Australia uh, the next year and mm -hmm. had a nice tour in Australia. And so it basically just took off from there. And, you know, one of the things that you know, your time on stage uh, on a tour is, you know, a couple hours a night, maybe. You, you, but you spend 10 hours, 12 hours a day driving through the wilderness, the outback, you know, or you know, on the Shinkansen in Japan, or just dealing with just life. And if you don't have a good tour partner, a good friend, 
someone who has all the qualities, someone who's good at traveling, good demeanor, good at connecting, having fun together, then it really makes it difficult to tour. And um, so, you know, the, the reality is, is I just kept on inviting them because it's like, we just had a great time together <clears throat> in all these different situations. And, 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 and eventually as me, as I got more comfortable with the music and playing, the connection we shared as friends shows up more and more in the music, especially if technically you kind of get things under control. And um, so that's also a very rewarding um, aspect is, is, is that we, we have our friendship, we have our touring, we have our concerts, but then there's a, there's a musical representation of the connection that shows up. And that's a beautiful thing. And I think the audience can also sense that as well. So that's a, a short and long answer to your question, Joe. <laughs> In what way did your relationship with your guru, Steve, change your awareness of music? Well, I always, I always uh, had a, a deep love for his, his, um, style and his approach to the music which was um powerful and yet somehow understated and sensitive um and for me unique in his uh ability to express um uh, emotion um pick out notes of a raga and um, bring them to life more than I had experienced with any other um, musician or any other teacher. But he was, uh, you know, he was a, a giant, certainly in the music, musical sphere. Um, and for most of the time, his students and disciples were in awe of his uh, his teaching and his uh, approach to life, which he shared with us as well. Ty, uh, uh, another question came in. Could you describe a little bit about your relationship between teaching versus performing and how they support one another along your musical path? Well, um, <laughs> For me, they, they go, I was told by some people over the years that, oh, you know, if you want to really be a full blown performer, then you kind of don't teach because then you're systematizing uh, a fluid system. You're trying to, to trying to contain it and um, it, it'll inter, it interfere in some ways with your performing as just a free minded musical performer as a like a on a maestro level i think they were talking about um but uh you know i considered that idea and um and but but, but my own teacher you know zakirji would tell me ty you should you should you know you have the right personality for this you should teach you should share what you what you're doing and um it'll help in your musical income and everything like that so so I started teaching basically because uh, Zakirji told me, you know, please go out and, and help people because a lot of people, you wouldn't believe on the Zakir tours, right? Which I, I did for 25 years every year. How many people come up to me and they say, oh, can you get me into the workshop, the master class with Zakir, right? And I'm like, yeah, I can put in a word and that's about it. Because it's, it's very, there's, you know, thousands of people who want to join that and there's enough room for 50 or 60, you know. So, um, so at one point I realized, and some of those people really didn't have a lot of experience with the music. They just love, they want to be around Zakir. And yet they also love the tabla, right? So, so I, I started teaching these classes, which is what uh, Camilo started coming to right from the beginning. And, and then Greg came and a lot of people, Heather and Joe and so many people. 
have been coming to those and um and i'm finding th this is a very interesting thing and it's just a recent discovery because I, be, I started doing online classes where i'm i'm filming lessons of of me teaching and then you know i've put them up onto a platform online and then people can watch the same lesson over and over which is really important because a lot of the stuff you know, there's so much material you can cover in this art form as as is with Sirot and the classical melodic music that there's certain lessons that you really just need to go over and over again until it becomes second nature, then move on to the next level. So what I found is that I've taught it so much now that watching my own videos, <laughs> I'm realizing <laughs> I'm realizing that I actually got to go back to the some of the basics and start relearning some of the technique that i know and i can teach someone else but i at, as soon as i get up to a performance situation i revert back to old habits mm -hmm. and and i can see that now because i've been spending so much time developing these videos right um so the the answer to the question really is that the teaching has come full circle back to myself. I don't think I would have gone back to the beginning as a performer to rebuild that and make it stronger if I hadn't have had to teach the beginning. So for me, my journey, it's been really a blessing to, uh, to teach and perform. Before we say all our goodbyes, I want to just mention a few important uh, things to our audience. Uh, one is that Steve Oda and Ty Boru have a CD, have an album called Peace. And uh, it's one of, for me, it's one of my favorite classical music of India CDs. Uh, Steve has a beautiful story. If you want to learn more about his experience in Japan, uh, his website, steveoda.com, has a beautiful, like a very touching story of how he, he connected with his roots in Japan. Uh, it's, uh, it was a detective work uh, of uh, his friends um, in Japan that uh, went to great lengths to find out the village where his uh, grandparent, his uh, grandfather and, uh, and grandmother emigrated from Japan to Canada. So it's a very touching story. Just go to steveoda.com. This will be our little farewell melody. Traditionally at the end of a concert, we play a raga that's called Bairvi, which um, for, for some of you that know, is a mourning raga because in many cases, Indian classical concerts end in the morning. So maybe, um, actually this would be appropriate for Japan since it's still the morning there. Um, so we'll play a little Bairavi for you. Mm -hmm. 